Why look? The reason is, scientific studies have shown that foot orthotics don't work. And I would reference the Pfeffer study, Journal of Foot and Ankle, April of 99. They looked at 5,000 patients in 15 centers across the United States for the initial treatment of plantar fasciitis. Seven different modalities were compared. Custom-made orthotics, prefabs, Thule heel cups, felt pads, stretching, syllopost pads. You know what came out the best? Cheap prefabricated orthotics. You know what came out the worst? Custom-made orthotics from a podiatrist. And not just any custom-made orthotics. They used a lab that's owned by the chief of biomechanics at the California College of Podiatric Medicine in the study. So they did their homework. Well, the study was repeated in the Journal of the American Podiatric Medical Association, February 2001. Mechanical treatment of plantar fasciitis, comparing customs and prefabs. What did they find? No statistically significant difference noted in between the treatment groups. In fact, these are their graphs. Customs, prefabs. Now imagine you're an insurance company. Do you see $400 worth of difference between those graphs? Well, neither do the insurance companies. But they did prove quite conclusively that flat hard orthotics are indeed flat hard orthotics. But the study I really like was done in biomechanics in October of 2000. Laurie Tiss and Beth Higby, both PhDs in lower extremity biomechanics, and the reason they're so this is so significant, is these two ladies have one of the best skate labs in the world. In 95, before the 96 Olympics, they came through and turned one of the gymnasiums into one of the most high-tech gate labs in the country. And their interest has been studying foot orthotics. And they write, orthoses reduce pressure, but fall short of biomechanical correction. Now, most of the biomechanics we know comes from root, orient, and weed. They wrote the original text in 1977 normal and abnormal function of the foot. And they quote Root. In the article, they say, according to Root, during the push-off phase of gait, plantar pressure should be highest under the medial forefoot and hallux. In other words, under the first metatarsal and big toe. In contrast, the orthoses in this study seem to reduce plantar pressure in these areas, actually making the gait cycle worse. First day I was in podiatry school, somebody came in and wrote on the door, on the, on the door, on the, on the blackboard, primum non nocere. We're all wondering what that means. It means, doctor, first, do no harm. Don't make the gait cycle worse. And this was even when patients were getting better. Well, they asked me to come and speak at Georgia State, which is kind of like walking into the lion's den. They've made their career proving that foot orthotics don't work. At the end of my lecture, they said, interesting, let's go to the gate lab. They were so impressed with what they saw, they started six research projects, four have been completed. And they write me this letter. We're finding in general that wearing sole supports does seem to shift pressure onto the first ray during push-off. We've not seen this shift onto the first ray from other custom molded orthotics we've used in prior studies. So if customs and prefabs are basically the same, you only have three choices. You can continue what you're doing. In other words, you could continue dispensing orthotics that are no better than prefabs and calling them custom. Or you can go ahead and switch to prefabs. Why not save your patients some money? But wouldn't it be better if we could shift our paradigm? What do I mean, shift our paradigm? What I mean is put together the things that you already know and observe in a new way. I'm not going to show you something here that you don't see every day in your practice. But what I am going to do is I'm going to completely destroy the pillars of traditional podiatric biomechanics, which are casting in neutral position, neutral plaster suspension casting, rear foot and forefoot posting, and cast correction. First, you have to ask yourself, if you're going to study biomechanics, what is the major deforming force on the human body? Turns out, it's gravity. Uh, I was at the New Jersey Podiatric Medical Association meeting. I was having lunch, and there was a sign over where I was eating. It said, gravity, it's not just a good idea. It's the law. <laughs> the average person we know takes 10 to 15,000 steps in a day. 
And the foot is how we interface with gravity. It's how gravity interacts with our body. So that imbalances in the foot are going to affect the entire kinetic chain. I always like to start out by defining my terms. And we're going to start with the cardinal body planes. Firstly, the sagittal plane divides us left to right, and the mid-sagittal plane divides us in half. The frontal plane divides us front to back, and rotation around the frontal plane you could see in the screen. The transverse plane is the plane of the floor and divides us top to bottom. Now, how does the foot move in each one of these planes? In the transverse plane, for example, we have internal and external rotation, most of which is really soft tissue motion at the hip. In the frontal plane, we have inversion and eversion, but we call the positions varus and valgus. In the sagittal plane, we have two flexions, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Firstly, why is the top of the foot called the dorsum? The reason is, embryologically, the limb buds emerge with the top of the foot facing the back. So that as you develop, you rotate down, and what was facing the dorsum of the body is now on top. So coming towards you should be extension, which is too weird. So we have two flexions, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Bones of the foot. The calcaneus or heel bone, the talus, navicular, cuboid, three cuneiforms, the metatarsals, and phalanges. I'm going to divide the foot into two major columns, depending on which major rear foot bone they emerge from. Those bones coming off the talus make up the medial column, the first three metatarsals. Those bones coming off the calcaneus make up the lateral column, fourth and fifth metatarsals. Then we further divide the foot into rays. We like to say that the hallux, the first metatarsal, and medial cuneiform make up the first ray, and there are five rays of the foot. Now, how does weight normally pass through, or ideally pass through the foot? Ideally, we would heel strike on the lateral side, come up the lateral, across the metatarsals, and out the great toe. Unfortunately, most people don't pass weight through the foot in an ideal pattern. Most people heel strike a little more medial, come slightly lateral, and out toes two and three, until they go get a standard foot orthotic. Then they pass weight out four and five. Now, some of your joints are cardinal body plane joints. They work on one of the three body planes. For example, the knee is very close to a sagittal plane joint. What I want you to notice is that if you have an axial joint or a hinge joint, the axis of motion is going to be perpendicular to the plane of motion. A little corollary to that is that if you push along an axis of motion, you'll get no motion at the joint. Why? If you push along the axis of the knee, you're not going to get knee extension. The reason? Because torque is force times distance. And that distance is measured between the axis and the force. Pushing along the axis, there's zero distance and therefore zero torque.